All right, go produce. This is the Reflection Series, episode four. We're going to be talking about events and festivals, main takeaways from seasons one, two, and three. We've got a couple of guests that I want to bring back, and we've got some of their clips, so that we're going to be checking those out. Without further ado, here is our intro. Okay, go produce. In this episode, we'll be focusing on the ins and outs of festivals and events. I believe that one day soon, we will be able to get back to our dancing ways. Until then, we'll talk about them. Featuring Brandon Edie, Dimitri Manuel, Derek Young, Bungie, Brad Jones, Ali Shafi, Gabriel Matacchioni, Mercedes Gaja, and Savannah Soul. Make sure to listen till the end where I share three main takeaways from all of the conversations I've had throughout seasons one, two, and three. It's safe to say that all performing artists at one point in their careers will ask themselves this question. How can I book myself at events and festivals? One of the first professionals you're gonna wanna approach about this as an artist is a promoter. Let's hear from Brandon Needy. First, letting them know that you exist by sending them an introduction email or sending them links uh, or a one sheet um, you know, to them, I, I can't, or a promoter can't book the act if they don't know that they don't exist or if they haven't heard them. Uh, I mean, so a lot step of the time one, get known, right? Step, well, not, yeah, I mean, get known, but also it's, you know, go out there and networking, uh, like net, net, networking is 90% of this industry. Um, you know, if you're coming out and supporting other shows and other bands, uh, there's a better chance that I'm going to, you know, or that anybody's going to take a look at you and support you. Um, uh, yeah, and then I mean, it's you know, showing, showing what you can do live, showing the crowds, just constantly being on top of them, uh, writing good music, coming out with you know, good quality material. All right, so Brandon Ed just told us how an artist can provide their worth to a promoter. Quite frankly, it's quite obvious. How are they going to be able to book you if they don't know about you? How do you make yourself known? You can put out content. You can send professional emails. You can interact in live webinars. And of course, you can be prepared. Remember how we spoke about that in episode number two? Make sure to be prepared. Derek Young tells us why it's so important to be prepared. You don't know when your moment is going to come. Uh, my, first, my first DJ gig, like serious DJ gig, was because um, a DJ got sick. Oof. And I was playing in another room, like a small room, and the the general manager of the bar came up to my friend and I who were DJing at the time. He was like, how would you guys fill in for him this Saturday? And we were like, yeah, sure. So we came in, we practiced, we got all ready. And we were like, you know, we, we DJ this thing. Like it was the most important thing in my life, right. In our lives. And the guy came up to us at the end of the night and was like, yeah, you guys are back every Saturday night. How wild is that though? Hey, you never really know when your moment is going to come because of that. Make sure to practice visualize yourself in the moment all of these different kinds of practices and techniques will help you do better when the actual event arises you will likely experience at least still a couple of nerves before any of these major opportunities arise or even as they present themselves you will you will still feel the nerves but visualization practices practicing actually your your technique and your craft will go a long way. It just, it would just pain me so much for that opportunity to come to you and for you to miss it because you're underprepared. How would you feel? How, how would you feel if that was to actually happen? Let's be honest, let's not risk that. Let's say one of these opportunities leads to you touring. You spend a lot of time on the road now. How do you maintain your professionalism when you're exposed to different stressors, perhaps new stressors while you're on the road? Bungie tells us his tricks. Always have a good sense of humor about things and you know, don't mind the little things because those are the things that'll, that'll get you in the end. I'll always have a guitar for my hotel room or be able to find a spot to go sit and play it for a while. And that is usually my stress relief. Find people with similar interests that you can hang with, right? And people that you trust, like, I mean, with your life. Now that we've heard of the techniques that Bungie uses to manage his stress while on the road, let's explore it a little bit further. It's the little things he said in the ends that get you. Small little tidbits here and there that add up slowly but surely, and then for some reason you explode. You know you have that friend, they're like, yo, that came out of nowhere. That's the reasons. These different small things that kind of add up, they have a way of adding up and festering until it's too late. But without all of this room for improvement, how can you truly improve yourself and become the best version of yourself without undergoing all of these stressful, rigorous transformations. These periods of reflection are, are super important 
for any individual to undergo and they they will do so voluntarily and involuntarily at different stages of their lives too it's quite fascinating and this is true for people but it is also quite true for events you have to reflect on the event experience in order for that event to grow and flourish as time moves on brad jones shares the importance of doing this it is trial and error you know we that's basically what it is. I, I'd love to tell you that there's a magic formula, but there isn't. We just uh, will, if something works, we'll keep it. If something's not working, we'll try to change it. And we'll hopefully it doesn't take us too, too much time to, to get it right. But yeah, we're, we're even in our 17th year, we're still tweaking things year to year. These are techniques that Brad Jones uses to figure out what works for his event. Repetition, observation, deliberation, execution. The same practice was applied by the team behind Escapade Music Festival out in Ottawa. Let's hear some more from Ali Shafi. Um, yeah, so I run Escapade. Um, so I'm the director of the festival. Uh, it came to be in 2010. Uh, we started with an idea of kind of just throwing a candidate party in a parking lot downtown Ottawa. We had Dead Mouse, um, you know, who is our first performer for the festival. You know, it was like, I think we did just over 2,000 people, didn't make any money. But for Ottawa, it was like, whoa, this is something cool. And, you know, from there, we kind of just started to grow. The next year, we had Tiesto in the same parking lot. We sold out. All of a sudden, we were at 5,000 people. And we're like, okay, well, we're sold out. What do we do? So, so you went from, from 2,000 to 5,000 within a year. Yeah, we went 2,000, 5,000, and then the following year, we moved out to uh, a stadium set up, and we went to 15,000. So, um, you know, we're now in our, last year was our 10th anniversary. It was the first year we've ever sold out of the festival, which was 40,000 people. So, um, you know, in 10 years, we went from 2,000 to 40,000. Um, and it's uh, been a pretty wild ride. Ali just told us how Escapade Music Festival went from 2,000 attendees to 40,000 attendees in 10 years. Truly magnificent. If he can do it, why can't we? I don't mean to take away any of his ability or his credibility, but other people can also accomplish these kinds of feats. It's not impossible. This just proves that you can accomplish very magnificent tasks if you remain consistent if you remain diligent. Stick with your projects despite any of the challenges that pop up. They will for sure pop up. Beautiful things can happen if you remain diligent, if you remain consistent, despite all of the challenges that will pop up. Gabriel shares some of his. Some of the challenges naturally of uh, coming into any industry at a younger age um, is age itself. Um, you know, the, the, the older, more experienced, wiser um, players in the industry sometimes just, uh, you know, tend to negate anything you say or what you're trying to do, um, just, you know, on the basis of, of your age. So, you know, the age itself is, is definitely um, a huge challenge. Um, a way we, I've combated that uh, personally is I've listened more than I've spoken. Um, and when I have raised my voice, um, it, it's, it's with meaning and, and there's, there's definitely substance behind it. Um, and that typically tends to pierce the room um, and, and gains the respect of, of those around you. So huge challenge uh, in any industry is, is definitely the age, but, you know, it, it's definitely overcomable. Gabriel came into the game very young, and that's obviously a challenge in itself. People just don't think you know what you're talking about just because you're young. And oftentimes, they might be right. But there are some cases where just because the individual is younger than you doesn't mean that they are less knowledgeable than you. Perhaps they just have different abilities and they see things from a different way that might work better. So open communication across different generations is critical. And just in case you didn't hear what Gabriel said, I want to reiterate it one more time. He listened. He listened more than he spoke. It goes a long way. What about other challenges that we may experience within events and festivals? Perhaps challenges that shouldn't be. Big problems like sexual harassment. How do you handle that? Savannah shares her opinion. It's just really complicated because there's, there's what we're talking about is existing in a kind of a gray area where there isn't, like I said, there isn't an HR department. Nobody really fully gives a shit, which is unfortunate. But I mean, I've been on festival sites where I've had a male on the crew, like literally on the same team as me, harassing me to the point where I totally had to, thank God the production manager was a woman, but I had to go over there in the middle of a show where it is so busy. It's so crazy. There's a lot happening. Her walkie talkie and phone is ringing nonstop. And I'm like, 
I need to talk. I'm having an issue with somebody. Like it's a really complicated thing because again, shows have a life cycle. So when the show goes away, that person goes away, but it's still in the moment and I'm still trying to do my job and I'm having a complicated time getting my job done. You are not alone. Make sure to have your allies. And allies can look like anyone that you can confide in. Savannah also goes on to say that there are so many other people that have likely experienced something exactly like you're going through or something very similar to what you're going through. So you don't have to go through this on your own. And for what it counts, I am also available for having conversations like this if you are at all comfortable reaching out to me. This is a judge-free zone. It's safe. I'm happy to provide that for whoever wants to have a conversation with me. Thankfully, not all of our challenges that we experience are as serious as sexual harassment. And for that, we can laugh about some of them. One example of something that we can laugh about is this story with Dimitri Manuel. Has there ever been a time where you encountered an artist that is just too much, no names necessary, but the behavior was even overwhelming for you? I mean, locally, no. Internationally, yes. A uh, riffraff. Oh. <laughs> and I don't want to, I don't even like admitting that I booked him, but it was the worst experience of my life. I, I think I almost fought his brother, who was his road manager, who was a complete an utter idiot. Oh, I think you need to recall this memory because that's a great story. They got they got kicked out of their hotel at the Delta. They were staying at the Delta and they got kicked out at like two in the morning, three in the morning. I got an email the next day and I apologized to them. I said, sorry, I'll never book, uh, book this individual ever again. What I took away from this story was that some people just want to be difficult. They, they get a kick out of it. As to why, I haven't the slightest idea. Something else that proves to be difficult is the curation of bills for events and festivals. I bet you didn't know this. Mercedes, tell them. When I go to when I went to conferences last year, I knew that it wasn't for this year. I knew that it was probably for 2021 or 2022 depending on that. Whereas like some musicians get a little uh, maybe frustrated thinking like, why aren't I playing next year? You know, but our, you know, our bill takes over a year to curate because of the fact that we're traveling because we want it to be as diverse as possible. Um, and, you know, we don't want to only present bands from Colombia or we don't want to only present bands from France or wherever, you know, like we want to make sure that we are presenting from as many different countries and as many different genres and regions as possible. Thank you, Mercedes and all the other music presenters out there that put together these beautiful shows, events and festivals that we're able to attend. And I'm sure that within the near future, we'll be able to get back to that lifestyle that we miss so much. Tell me in the meantime, which festival are you looking forward to most? Our all right, go produce. Now it's time for the three main takeaways. Takeaway number one, artists, do the background work. Make sure to do the ugly work. Build your foundation because without a strong foundation, you will not be able to build anything that flourishes. Main takeaway number two, have a plan. Once you have your plan, be prepared to make adjustments because different things are going to happen along the way. And when these happen, you're going to have to be able to pivot. You're going to have to be able to re-strategize, learn from the experience, and then continue to navigate towards your final goal. So make sure you do that. Takeaway number three, let's end sexual harassment. No matter what sexual orientation you are, we have to put an end to this. Enough's enough already. If you see it, call it out. Do not tolerate that kind of behavior. With our three main takeaways out of the way, I'll talk about now what's next for our next episode. In episode five, we're gonna be talking about labels and PR, public relations, their relationship with artists and how their roles fit into the whole music industry. In conclusion, I want to shout out all parties involved. Thank you so much for everything that you do for us. Without all of your efforts and contributions, we wouldn't be able to do what we've done so far. Big shout out to all of our listeners. If you enjoyed any of this material, make sure to hit that like and subscribe and the little bell for notifications because we release episodes every Wednesday and I wouldn't want you to miss anything that we share. In the comments below, make sure to tell me what the main takeaway was from this episode. Let's have a conversation around that. Let's, let's hash it out a little bit more and see what we can learn from that. With that said, that's everything. We out. Ooh, whoop.